Hey there, this is David Fall from Facilitated Solutions. I want to share with you today um, a worksheet that I got out of this lovely book called The Myth of Stress by Andrew Bernstein. Now, I'm a big believer that uh, whenever I find a resource that I think is awesome, I have to use it for myself first before I recommend it to others. So while I was reading through this book a few years back, I came across this idea of shoulds and the stress that these beliefs, when we believe that someone should listen to me or they shouldn't do that, how that can really cause us to um, run into all kinds of kind of challenges because we're placing expectations on others um, that they may or may not be living up to and we have very little control over that. And so there's this worksheet in this book uh, that Andrew Bernstein um, walks people through and uses in his practice that I found really quite compelling. And it has nine steps. Step number one starts off with simply this, where you write a concise statement describing something that you experience as being stressful or disempowering. And it's helpful when you write down the statement to use the words should or shouldn't in your sentence. For example, they should listen to me or they shouldn't have done that to me. Um, in Bernstein's book, he uses an example of someone who's in a penitentiary, um, who's been sent to an anger management session that he's leading. And doing this exercise, the guy in the penitentiary writes down, I shouldn't have to be here, both in jail and at the anger management session, right? So when I was working through this, I had to come up with my own example. And I'm sitting in my office trying to figure out like, what is something that causes me some distress or that I'm feeling disempowered by? And I came up with one. I always go to the mother-in-law file if needed, right? And I came up with my statement and my statement was, my mother-in-law should not be afraid of me. I'm a nice guy. At the time I'd been married to my wife for like 20 years and um, you know, she shouldn't be afraid of me. Heck, I'm a mediator. What's not to love? Well, Step number two, so I wrote that down in step one. Step number two on his worksheet says, how strongly do you feel this belief to be true? And you need to scale it from one being super weak to 10 being really strong. Well, I circled that like a nine or a 10. Like, yeah, she shouldn't be afraid of me. Step three, how do you feel when you believe this? And he goes on to provide a bunch of emotional words. And he says, circle all that apply and or add your own words, right? So I'm reading through the list that's provided here. And like, how do I feel when I focus on that my mother-in-law should not be afraid of me? Well, I get kind of annoyed, maybe even a little bit of angry. Um, I uh, am frustrated. I feel a little bit rejected or resentful. Eh, that's enough for this. Step four, how do you act? when you feel that way. So when I'm feeling annoyed and frustrated and resentful, how do I act? And again, he provides a bunch of sample suggestions, right? That you can either circle or add your own. And I'm reading through the sample list here. I'm like, well, I complained to my wife about her mom, which I guess that would also be called gossip. So I should circle that one too. And I get a little bit of self pity. And I shut down, oh yeah, and I withdraw. That's enough for now. Step five. Now it gets hard. He says, write the negation of your statement from step one. In most cases, it's helpful to add in reality at the beginning and at this time or at that time at the end. So for example, in reality, they should not listen to me at this time. Or that guy that was in the penitentiary, he wrote down, in reality, I should be here at this time. This is reality. He's locked up in a jail. He's been sent to an anger management class. So in reality, I should be here at this time. This is really hard. And I think you'll find it really hard too. I had to write down, in reality, my mother-in-law should be afraid of me at this time. It is what it is. Don't worry, this worksheet gets worse. Step six. Andrew Bernstein writes, write below all the proof that you can find that supports this new statement, this belief, as being truly the reality at this time. And he suggests to take your time. I gotta tell you, this sucked. So I'm sitting in my office writing down reasons why my mother-in-law should be afraid of me at this time. 
Well, there's some easy low-hanging fruit, eh? Me complaining about her to her daughter. Me shutting down and withdrawing. Being kind of visibly upset or annoyed. Makes her scared of me. Um, she did this wonderful thing for years where we would go have a family meal on, fr on Fridays. And uh, not only would we have a family meal at her place, but then she would take our youngest, who's deep on the autism spectrum, for a sleepover. And like, she's the only person who's ever taken this boy for a sleepover because it's a little bit of a high-risk event, right? And so it's just incredible. It's just this wonderful generosity of providing us a meal and taking Noah. Well, the pattern that I found myself getting into is that by the time I hit Friday for supper, I'm wiped out. I'm all talked out from leading sessions and mediating. I'm kind of done. And I would crash at her place. And so I wouldn't be very communicative. I'd be a bit quiet. And I know my mother-in-law, and I know that one of the things that causes her more anxiety than anything is men who are silent. Because she's of the generation and was kind of raised that the goal is you got to keep men happy. And if I'm quiet, if I'm withdrawn, she can't read me and she doesn't know if I'm happy and doesn't know how to make me happy, right? And so I'm contributing to her fear and anxiety of me by being withdrawn and quiet. And then her being annoyed or anxious about me causes me to become more annoyed. You get the cycle, right, of how this just spins in. So there's some easy ones here, right, in terms of going, okay, so why is it, you know, in reality, she should be afraid of me at this time because I'm being kind of a bit, bit of a jerk. I'm being kind of withdrawn and shut down and quiet, and that freaks her out. And I know that about her, right? Well, why else? 6B, read out all the things you've come up with. And then is there more evidence, more reasons that support this new statement? So why else, in reality, should my mother-in-law be afraid of me at this time? Well, I'm married to her baby. There's no one in the world could hurt her more than me. And if that doesn't give a parent a little bit of pause for anxiety, what, what would? Everyone knows the divorce rates. And for those of us who are parenting um, children that have uh, unique you know, developmental challenges, the divorce rates are even worse. And so she knows this. Not only does she know it academically, but she knows this from lived experience that men have hurt her deeply. She's had people break vows with her. People who have said all kinds of lovely things, right? Uh, and so I know this about her, that she has been deeply betrayed and hurt by men. And I'm a man. And not only am I, am I a man, but I'm married to her youngest, right? To her baby. And I wrote down a few other things, but you get the gist of it, yeah? Step seven. How do you feel when you see the truth of this new statement? So now spending some time reflecting on, in reality, my mother-in-law should be afraid of me at this time. How do I feel about it? And there's a list of all these wonderful words again. Well, well, calm, clear, compassionate. And again, they suggest circle that apply to you and or write down your own words. And so I wrote down or I circled compassionate, bit humble, um, bit understanding. Step eight, what actions might come from this new perspective? And again, there's a list of suggested actions of options, not suggestions, but options. Circle what that might apply and or write down your own. So I'm reading over this. I could maybe apologize or I could communicate, be more communicative if I could, mm, be a bit more grateful, give thanks. Um, I could open up, I could engage a bit more. And then step nine, read your original statement from step one. How strongly do you feel this to be true? That my mother-in-law should not be afraid of me. Well, my number went from a 10 to a much lower number after doing this worksheet. Not only did that number go down lower, but I came up with a plan. And thinking about this, I thought, you know what? This is a gift, these Friday you know, family meals that we have. I need to make sure I keep a little bit in my tank for Friday. It's not that long. Well, we maybe arrive at 5.15 or 5.30ish at the latest. And by 7, 7.30, Noah is bringing our shoes because he wants us to go home because when he's got grandma to his own, he gets more treats, right? So 
at tops, it's a two-hour window of time on a weekly basis that I need to keep a little bit of gas in the tank and not drop my guard. I don't have my end-of-the-week crash in my mother-in-law's house. I can do this. I can even just fake it if I have to. And so I started a little experiment where I would try to communicate a little bit more intentionally, be a little bit more hopefully grateful and complimentary, ask her a question or two, um, thank her for the meal. Just be a decent human being on my part in terms of being engaging and not, you know, like I say, having my crash at her home. About three months into this experiment of just intentionally doing these things, it's not like I sat down and had a heart-to-heart -heart with her and said, I'm sorry that... No, we didn't even discuss her fear and my frustration around her being fearful of me. I just started acting differently. And after about three months, my wife approached me and said, what's up with you and mom? I said, what do you mean? She's like, it just feels like things have shifted. There isn't as much tension as there has been in the past. I'm like, well, I read this book by Andrew Bernstein, and there's a worksheet in it. And I wanted to walk her through the worksheet. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you just keep on doing what you're doing because it's working, right? So there's a real power, um, I find, when you look at um, ongoing relationships that you have. And looking at the things that causes cause you frustration or where you feel disempowered, and using this worksheet to really work through your beliefs around them, and to look at maybe a different way of thinking, and recognizing that that different way of thinking, instead of thinking about the shoulds, but actually recognizing facing reality and saying reality is what should be right now, at least at this time. Then figuring out, okay, why is that the case? How do I now feel? What might I now do? It empowers you to start taking action and doing things about your life instead of giving away everything and being frustrated and having you know zero agency in your own existence. So I encourage you to look through this worksheet um, even more so. Get the book. A um, little plug for Bernstein's book. It's a great little read around understanding stress or where stress is, and the subtitle says where stress really comes from and how to live a happier and healthier life. So that's all for me for today. Enjoy.